I've long told farmers that pH is vital for their soil. It's one of the key tests they should be doing to look at the connection between the soil, the plant and the animal, particularly in regard to the health of the plants and the soil biome. Recently, I've found that as a profession, we have let farmers down by not being able to communicate it in a way that farmers are able to do it every day. I am hoping that by the end of this video series, you'll be as passionate and as excited as I am about pH. Because everything in this complex system of farming is influenced by pH. In front of me are a whole lot of items that might take you back to science at high school. And these items show a variation in pH. What is pH? pH is the negative log of hydrogen activity. So P means negative log. What does that mean? That means that as you go down or as, as you approach one from here, this potable water being neutral, each time you go down a unit from seven to six and from six to five, you increase the activity of hydrogen by 10 times. So for instance, this particular vinegar would be somewhere around three. And here, I've cut this, this lemon is about three and a half. And oh, it's sour, it tastes sour. So acids are sour. Potable water should be between six and eight. Milk is a bit above eight. Your soap sits somewhere around nine. The ash that you get from your fireplace will be somewhere between 10 and 11, which is an absence of hydrogen. It has too much hydroxide. So these things all feel a bit slippery. When you come up to concrete at about 12 and a half, it's not only slippery when it's wet, but it actually takes all your skin off. It dissolves your skin, which is why you wear gloves. So slippery, acid, it's moderately easy to take a soil from this pH, say four and a half to six, you need maybe 20 times as much hydroxide to balance that acidity, that hydrogen. But to take it from here, three to six, you need a thousand times more to do it. So there the key things to understand is that it's a multiplier of 10 that you're dealing with for each pH unit. So to move from 3.2 to 6 is a big journey. It is really important to understand what your pH is doing and if you're seeing a pH drift to correct it. Later in this series we will talk a lot more about how to correct it. Before you can correct pH you've got to know what it is and to work out what it is in the soil let's dig a hole. The first mistake people make when sampling for soil pH is to sample from here what they've dug out. The problem is that pH varies with depth. So that means you sample at the top of the profile and then each change of colour, or if there's no change of colour like this soil, 100 to 150 mil depth intervals because plants also influence soil pH and the pH can vary even when you're at a great depth. The next mistake people make is taking too big a sample. It should be about half a small fingernail's uh, amount of sample, or just the, the tip of your pen knife or the tip of a screwdriver that you use to take the sample. Then you, it's wise to follow the same order that when you place it out, because you can get mixed up if you vary your order on where you've taken it from. Once you've taken your sample, Lay it out on a flat surface, it can be the tray of the ute, it can be the bonnet of the car. We use soil indicator tests. They're available from hardware shops, but the ones we use are designed especially for Australia. And they're much better than the hardware shops because they have three indicators. The ones from the hardware shops only have one indicator. 
Many farms have a diversity of parent material and pH on them and they need the three indicators to get the correct pH. So please buy them from inocular laboratories. The details will be at the end of this video on how to contact them. You can get sample kits or you can get bulk pH solution and indicator. So let's now talk about how to do it. The kits come with a variety of things. Instructions. I always lose these little satchels and I tend to very quickly lose my toggle sticks. So what I tend to do is use an old kitchen tile or these paint kits that you get from the reject shop and either my knife or sticks I pick up because I've lost everything else along the way. So let's now go through the process that you're taking. One is an indicator and the other is a colour fixer. Neither are toxic or hazardous but the indicator can stain you. So be aware that it's going to leave a permanent stain until your skin wears off. So now you run several drops of water, or sorry, indicator, and you mix it in with your stick or your knife. The stick's good because you can break off each bit as you've done it. Now these are the soils that we just sampled both top and 100 mil down. And these are a couple of very acid samples. This one from acid sulfate soil and this one from acid mine drainage. I probably put a bit too much indicator in the acid mine drainage. So now we're going to mix so we can get a paste-like consistency. I pick up another swiggle stick. You can see quickly there's a substantive difference in colour. I can almost read it without a fixer. So what we're dealing with we take the colour indicator and this is running at the surface a pH of about 6 and it's yeah, yeah it's probably 5.5 yes 5.5 down at 100 mil but if you look at this one This is running a pH of three and a half, and this one's running a pH of four. So three and a half is toxic to almost all plants. That's acid sulfate soil, so when it's gone acid, that's the pH it runs. And this one's a bit of uh, mine damage soil, so it's running a pH of four. So both of them, three and a half and four, are a good indicator of why plants struggle to grow in these environments. So let's look at the agricultural soil that we've pulled from the paddock. So we're going from six at the surface and it's a bit below six but not, not quite five and a half. So between five and a half and six. So there is a drop in pH with depth, that's called acid trending. So if your pH is going from six and a half or seven down to six, or six down to five and a half, or six down to five, or in some cases it might go to six to four and a half, that's known as acid trending. Many of our desert and semi-arid soils might go from six up to eight and a half. That's called alkali trending. And both of them need correction, but there's 
different types of correction is required. We'll talk about correction in the next video. Make sure you subscribe or you'll miss out on the next video.